Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the Ubuntu upgrade process in terms of a new user. Hello! So how does a new user find the upgrade process of Ubuntu? Well, specifically Kubuntu. So normally when I do an upgrade, I tend to just reinstall and I'll normally go for the long-term support releases, which are supported for, well, up to five years. So every couple of years I would do an upgrade. So quite simple for me, but we did not have that option with you because we built a Ryzen 3 based system, which was when around Christmas, Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, so, so I've been running this for about six months now. Yeah, with Kubuntu 2010. So yeah, with the newer hardware, obviously it needed a newer kernel and that's why the long-term support release wouldn't have really cut it with uh, your system, hence we had to do the interim release instead, which uh, obviously a new version of Kubuntu came out in April and it's coming up to July. So it's only three months after we get. So we've got about a month to go, I think, until we absolutely have to do the upgrade. And we thought that it was best to be able to choose a suitable time to do the upgrade rather than have to, rather than waiting until the last minute and then mm -hmm. being forced to do the upgrade. Yeah. Now, before starting this process, we did a full disk image using Clonezilla, which I managed to get confused on how to do because because I normally do disk to disk backup in one system. You only have one disk in your system, so we had to back up to the NAS, the network attached storage device. And I think I chose the wrong option. We thought we wiped out the entire system. I don't know how that can happen so quickly, but anyway, we cancelled it and- uh, It was fine. Yeah, you were just slightly <laughs> annoyed with me at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's sorted now. So we've got a backup so we can roll back quite quick and easy. So hopefully we don't need to use it, but it's always uh, best to- uh, be certain in these cases. So I don't think you actually had a lot of applications pre-installed in this system. We did have a bit of a look through here. Uh, I know we've installed a few bits, uh, obviously things that you've been working on with videos. Yeah, like yeah. Image Magic, um, we installed Audacity, and I think VLC Media Player and a few other bits and pieces. But yeah, apart from that, I haven't really been, you know, adding too much on, on top of what was already there. And I don't think you've done a huge amount of customization either. It still had the same menu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but you did we have added a few drives in Dolphin, so we're going to see if those come back afterwards. Mm -hmm. So the update process between Ubuntu and Kubuntu does differ slightly in that I think it's a little bit simpler in Ubuntu in that there is an option within the update manager to choose whether to go on to a different release and choose between going to long-term support release or interim releases. So Kubuntu was slightly different, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so I had to look up for a guide on how to do the upgrade, but upon reading through the instructions, a lot of the instructions were kind of for setting up before doing the upgrade and making sure that your system is completely ready. Um, there was a set of instructions, I think, to things to bear in mind if you're a laptop user, but hopefully having a desktop, the power won't cut out when doing when doing the upgrades, that should be okay. Um, and just making sure that the system is up to date and has all the, the updates installed, which which it was. So. so to actually do the upgrade, it's just one command to run in the console. So we will see what the result of that is. So the command is sudo do release upgrade and we thought we'd opt for the terminal upgrade as opposed to the GUI one as we have done that before. So what was interesting was although we had made sure that we ran all the updates before running this command, what happened was this little pop-up came up in the course of running the command that said updates available and that was a bit annoying because we had made made sure to run them beforehand, but I think that there was probably another check that was uh, triggered by, uh, as part of the command. Um, so that's why that happened. Well, that's nice. You have to download four and a half gig of data and that could take seven days, nine hours of a 56K modem. <laughs> How prevalent are those these days that you have to uh, suggest that time scale? Oh, just, just a week. Don't worry about it, it's just a week. So we've just finished the process of upgrading and during the process itself, I was asked a couple of questions. The first one was about renaming the folder structure 
or slightly changing the folder structure for a service user account uh, relating, I think something relating to the password. And I read through the explanation and I just went with what it suggested because it seemed logical. Yeah. And the other question was about uh, confirming deletion of some packages. And I just was like, okay, yeah, let's go with that. Apart from that, you know, nothing, no, no other interaction was needed on my part. So very straightforward kind of uh, process for doing the upgrade. And then of course it did the restart yeah. and then it restarted. I don't think it took that long to do in the end, did it? It didn't actually, no, no. So I, I was kind of sat, you know, looking at my phone at the time with it in the background. Mm. But in terms of doing the download and everything and actually running through, doing all the changes, it didn't take very long at all. Uh, mm. In terms of in terms of something that should actually be quite a large, well, it's it's a full upgrade of the system. Mm. It isn't, isn't, wasn't very over the top. And I think, I thought it would be a lot more complicated in my head than it actually was. So that was good. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of when it did the restart and everything opened and I was quite happy that everything, you know, looked fine. The first thing I thought was the bottom panel seems to take up less space now. I don't know if it actually does or if it's part of the illusion of the fact that the icons in the bottom left appear to be quite small to me. I don't mind that it looks quite clean. I don't know if, you know, having a large monitor or what the impact of that will make any difference to me. I'll have to use the system a little bit uh, to see to see, but it should be fine to get used to. There are new shortcut icons now in the bottom left, which there weren't before. I did note that Firefox was there, which is the default browser for Kubuntu. I do tend to use Chromium as you've seen. So I will be changing that to be Chromium, but that's completely fine. Moving along to the bottom right now, the only real main change I saw there was that rather than just the time, it's showing the time and the date as the default kind of view there. That's the only other big difference there upon first looking at the system. And then opening the menu uh, with all the applications and things, there is a change there in how things look. It's still category based like it was before, but it seems to be a bit simpler in the layout. And yeah, it's definitely different. You've got more of the um, the kind of big icons showing, which I think is different to before. Yeah, you've got a different menu. I believe the menu did change in the Kubuntu 2104 release. So yes, you've kind of got the defaults of what the new system is. And it's quite easy to understand, I will say, going through the categories and then you see the description of the different applications as well. I will be looking at some of the other options to see if there's anything I'd like to change, but the default seems okay to start with. And the other main difference I've seen upon first using this is the uh, the operations at the bottom of the main menu for like sleep, restart and shut down. Before you'd have to go under um, a different option to get those, but you have like quick start buttons for those operations now, which is quite good. And then obviously if you click leave, you get lock and log out as well. So that is different, but is quite nice and, and clean to, to look at. In terms of looking at Dolphin, all of the shortcuts are there as they were before. No changes really, which is something that you like to see. And yeah, those are my first, obviously this isn't kind of a review of the system, but just my initial thoughts on how things look and how things have changed now for the new version of Kubuntu for me. And yeah, just my concluding thoughts in terms of the actual upgrade process, really, really simple. I use the console, like using the command to just run through it all. And as I said, I was only asked a couple of questions. I do have some experience using the terminal anyway. Um, so, I, but I don't think my experience really gave me too much over like a general novice user. The questions were fairly straightforward anyway. So I don't think there would have been any issue for someone with less experience than me to run through this. So mm. I think that's okay. And there is of course a GUI version. Um, I'm sure someone else will be looking at that um, at some point uh, if they haven't already. Uh, in terms of that, but I don't know how much simpler you can get over the the system and the process as it was for me. So all in all, a very straightforward 
straightforward mm-hmm. upgrade process and yeah I look forward to seeing all the different bits and pieces I can do now with the new version of Kubuntu yeah and there didn't seem to be any detriment on like boot up speed or anything we it's pretty it. much the same it's pretty mm-hmm. much the same I, we did a restart just to have a look at it again and it's the same as yeah. before mm. so it went well yes it went well <laughs> that's yeah. good yeah so we can keep it running like that for the next six months <laughs> Until we get and then to... we and then we look and see if there's any change at the next one. Yeah, <laughs> but but fingers crossed. Yeah. This uh, yeah, a, an initial kind of positive experience with the upgrade process, and as I said before, a lot simpler than I was anticipating. So yeah, all mm. good for me. Yeah, I think ironically at this point we could actually go back to long term sport release because it now comes in your kernel. Mm. But I, I don't know. I think we might as well keep going forward until I'm next long term sport yeah. and be done yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get it there, and uh, then we can leave it for longer. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.